Let's take a look at fixed overhead variances for just a moment. Uh, this is uh, one of the more uh, one of the easiest types of variances uh, that we can look at uh, in a manufacturing environment. Uh, but you know we'll we'll look at it nonetheless. So let's see what we have here for our scenario. It says. Uh, Petra Company uses standard costs for cost control and internal reporting. Fixed costs are budgeted at $44,000 per month at a normal operating level of 10,000 units. So the, these are our standard amounts. And we know that fixed costs don't generally change. Uh, within what we call the relevant range. However, that is not universally true. Okay, so this 44,000 and this 10,000 units of production are our standard. Uh, during October, actual fixed costs were $50,000 and actual production was, um, sorry, production output was 12,000 units. Determine the fixed overhead budget uh, variance. And then let's also uh, consider uh, B. It says as soon as the company applied fixed overhead to a production or to production on a per unit basis, determine the fixed overhead volume variance. Okay, so this is essentially what we have been doing with other items such as materials and and uh, labor and variable uh, overhead. The difference is that with fixed overhead, we all we have to do to determine the fixed overhead budget variance is simply compare the budgeted amount to the actual amount. And if we do that, let's make this calculator a little bit smaller here. Pull it down. <laughs> That's just merely saying, okay, we expect it to I have costs of 44000 and uh, we ended up having costs of 50000 I'm not putting that on the calculator because we can see pretty easily that that is a difference of $6,000. And because we spent more than we expected to spend, this would be an unfavorable variance. Okay. Now, this second part, the way they've worded this is a little odd, but um, what we you know, if we wanted to come up with a total variance, I mean, let's look at this first variance. I mean, it's pretty, it, it, it doesn't take Einstein to figure out why we had an unfavorable variance. Uh, we don't know what relevant range is, and we can't say, well, they must have exceeded relevant range, uh, because that's, again, that's not necessarily the absolute truth, but it's at least a possibility. So, of course, they're going to have an unfavorable uh, variance if they spend 50 and uh, expect it to spend 44. Now, if they had expected to produce 10,000 units and they did produce 10,000 units, well, then we would be done. We wouldn't need to do anything else. However, they produced more. And if they had produced less, we would be in the same boat. So this second, what we call volume variance, is similar to uh, for, you know, your, your labor variances, uh, efficiency, and for materials uh, quantity. So what we have to do and if we calculate this, we can actually come up with a total variance. Now, we don't have to do that in this question, but we could. What we have to do is we have to come up with a rate. And so we've got $44,000 is our standard cost, and we're going to divide that by standard units to be produced of 10000 and come up with $4.40. We're then going to multiply that 440 times actual production of 12000 and we're going to compare that to budgeted costs. And we have to do this, and I'll show you why. What we're going to do is now we're, we've got our actual here, 
okay? And we're going to um, we're going to subtract this forty-four thousand from it, but this is going to produce for us a figure of eighty-eight hundred dollars, okay? And this is actually going to be a favorable variance. All right, so you may wonder why is this considered to be a uh, favorable variance? Well, I, in explaining that, what I would ask you to do is think of this a little bit differently. I'm going to put the 52.8 that we calculated back on the calculator for just a moment. And so what we would be saying is that if we produce 12,000 units and we use that $4.40 per unit, we would expect to pay this 52.8 here, right? That that's not what happened. So our total variance, I think we can agree, 52.8 minus 50,000 is 2,800. Okay, so if that's true, and it is, and yet we have a $6,000 unfavorable variance here. The only way, the only figure that we can plug into this here to make this uh, work out for us, to create this $2,800 total fixed overhead favorable variance that we just calculated is to place this $8,800 here as a favorable variance. And then we could net the two out um, uh, as we've uh, done with um, both materials and labor so far. All right, not a lot to it, uh, but that's it for this video.